Listen, The Mule has to be the funniest movie just out of the reactions of it. Like some people have come out of this movie furious saying to pay attention to anyone who's given this movie a positive review because it's telling of who they are. And then I go look at them and it's like, from the most liberally Jewish people out there. Obviously, people are going to find politics in everything that they see, but as a Mexican cartoon, I find it hilarious when certain people want to bash a movie to defend us minorities, and then they also want to tell us minorities how to feel about it. Bro, you are worse than the movie. Y'all the people who liked Get Out not realizing Get Out was about you. Now, I'm not saying this to defend the mule and claim that Clint doesn't come off as a racist in this movie because... Clint Eastwood was literally one stereotype away from getting every single ethnicity out there. And I kind of feel like he took the Adam Sandler approach. If you know Adam, this dude practically goes on vacation with his friends and then he just shoots a movie while he's there so he can have his whole trip be tax deductible. And it kind of feels like Clint Eastwood took a page out of that book and where he made a movie that allowed him to say and do everything he ever wanted to do. Let me explain. So this movie is actually based off of a true story that the New York Times covered about a dude who broke bad and started transporting drugs for the Sinaloa cartel, led by El Chapo himself. In the real life case, they called him Tata since he was like the grandpa of the group, but it was that exact thing that allowed this dude to deliver over 200 kilos of cocaine at a time. Like this dude was making around a grand per each kilo, and he did this for damn near a decade before he got caught. So Clint stars and directs himself as the 88 year old Day Lily of aficionado who was on top of the world because everyone loved his plants. Like in the beginning of the movie they show him skipping his daughter's wedding just so he can go to a daylily convention where he had the woman pollinating themselves but then the internet happens. Now I love Clint Eastwood movies right? Growing up with them they were some of my favorite movies. I, I love most of his westerns, his directing style and approach with these movies I thought was fantastic but even as a fan of Eastwood I can straight up admit that you can feel the script cues when you're watching the movie on screen. Like I know he likes taking as little takes as possible on set, but my man always leaves in more awkward pauses than an episode of the Big Bang Theory, and this is coming from someone who likes his stuff. So Earl ends up losing his business, and since his family doesn't like him, he's got absolutely nowhere to go until he hears about Amazon Flex, but for drugs. All of a sudden he can buy his place back, he's got himself a new Lincoln, fixes up the VFW Center, and then pulls a Tarantino. We used to stack fucks like you five feet high in Korea. Use you for sandbags. Listen. The things this man says in this movie are, are straight up insane. Obviously, he's cracking Mexican slurs throughout the whole thing. He's talking about how every Latino looks the same. Ends up saving these two by telling a police officer that he picked them up at a Home Depot for cheap. But there's scenarios where he legit sets things up just so he can say certain words. He randomly comes across these female bikers just so he can say the word dyke with a huge smile on his face. In another, he does this whole Nazi bit against one of the cartel leaders. But the one that really quieted the audience was when he pulls over on the side of the road to help this black family change their tire and he says feels good helping you negro people that shut him up real quick it's the last one where he gets corrected that makes me see all of the ignorant stuff in the movie as not being as malicious as people think it is because there's always an opposing character who calls him out so for me it's kind of showing this elderly dude who's behind in the times how he hasn't changed and not necessarily someone who wants to peg people I mean, yeah, Clint Eastwood did talk to a chair, but I think many times it's people adding their own perspective. Like, there's a scene in the movie where they pull over this guy who they think might be the mule because he's driving a black truck. And it's supposed to be this comedic scene where the driver flips out because he thinks he might get shot. He starts talking about how getting pulled over are the most dangerous 15 minutes of your life. And while some people in my theater nodded their heads and said, damn straight it is, other people laughed because they thought it was supposed to be sarcastic. Like the scenes making fun of people who flip out for getting pulled over because it's not that much of a big deal. But uh, I literally just got pulled over the other day while passing through New Jersey just for a taillight. And five minutes in, they accused me of kidnapping my girlfriend because I had luggage in the car. And I had just convinced her she was free. Earl gets super used to this lifestyle as he keeps making runs and he starts having three ways in the movie. Two of them to be exact. Like I said... Clint straight up gets more booty than Bradley does in this film, and he's the man directing them. Eventually, the cartel gets more hostile as Lato randomly kills Andy Garcia just so he can be the leader. Cooper and Peña, who's still narking, set a trail on the mule as they close in. Earl goes to see the dying girl as he reconciles with his family before his wife's death. And as he gets caught and goes to court, I thought for a second that Clint Eastwood was just going to be set free after all of this buffoonery, but then he pleads guilty on himself. I was like, okay. 
And then the movie just ends with the credits superimposed over Clint Eastwood in jail. And after that, I started thinking, what if there was something deeper with all of this? Why would he come out of retirement and make two movies in one year? What if Eastwood wanted to say something more personal? All right, y'all know what it is. I've always had this Nolan theory where I believe that his movies are sort of letters to his kids and how he's explaining how he's always away for work. And The Mule kind of seems to fit in that too. The story of a man who's too busy working that he chooses it over his family. A man who craved the attention and the awards over his loved ones. Working with others on a schedule consisting on one takes. Being away because his work takes him elsewhere. And considering that he invited all eight of his children to the premiere, including one who people literally just found out with his daughter, it's almost like it was meant for them. The fact that he cast his own daughter in the film maybe is a direct apology for certain situations that happen in their real life. And the talks with his wife and how he had so many flings can be a sort of confession. A man who always played the authority, ironically now being the one who follows orders. And at the end, marking himself guilty. There's a bit where Cooper's character tells him how old people seem to lose their filter once they get older. And Clint Eastwood himself, not the character, responds with, I never knew I had one. It's almost like this is Clint Eastwood's last western, a modern age one where he saddled up for one last ride and sets out to have the final word. See you soon, I I I idiots. Hmm? It's for you. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. You know, I, I'm, I'm practically do a Clint Eastwood video because this man, like the collection of movies that I have of this dude is insane. I know that uh, Stan Lee was big for a lot of people and he was for me as well. You know, he's high up on our list and his passing was like a really big deal. But you have no idea how much bigger of an influence Eastwood is in terms of like my younger film watching days. So I don't even want to think about when he goes. But I think this is a dude that most recently, uh, while I don't overly love his movies, you know, it, the previous one that he did, the, the train one earlier this year, I think is one of the worst, best movies of the year. I think it's hilarious, even though it's complete trash, but he's pretty much become a master of trailers, like the, the trailer they did for American Sniper, regardless how, of how you feel of the movie, and the trailer that he did for this one specifically, where in the actual movie, it turns out that he gets away with it by putting arthritis medicine on his hands. I think he's a master at like the way that he's able to do his craft, and uh, I personally, you know, speaking as the, the Mexican of the group, white people can... Uh, tell me what I should be offended of but I always think that he always finds a way to put bad depictions and also a good role model like a good depiction depiction of whoever he's talking about in there but I'm curious to know your thoughts this movie wasn't great in any way shape or form but I thought it's it's interesting if you look at it from that final perspective that I was talking about and where he's actually trying to almost do an apology letter but I'm curious to know your guys thoughts down below in the comment section don't forget to comment like and subscribe and you'll feel lucky punk